Okay, so we're going to continue to graph. What we're adding to what we already know how to do are the phase shifts. That's your horizontal shift left and right. And don't worry about that, sweetheart. I have a little, thank you for trying to clean it. Yeah, I have a little whisk room. I'll get it in a minute. <laughs> but thank you for not just trying to leave it. Um, we're going to shift left and right, and then we're going to have some reflections. Okay, so if you've actually been practicing on the rest of this stuff and that makes sense to you, we're just adding a little bit to it and you'll be fine. All right, so phase shift or your horizontal shifts, we know that if we have a plus C, we are shifting which direction? Left. So we go left, whatever C units is. And if we have a minus C, we would shift right C units. <clears throat> okay, so we want to describe the translations. Actually, I just realized we'll just describe the horizontal translations because that's all the, the new part here. Um, so in number one, I have x plus pi, so that means I'm going which direction? Left and pi units because your x values, those are your inputs, those are your radians, so it should make sense that they're in pi. On number two, now, if you notice how this is written versus how this is written, when you have a B and a C, in order to recognize them as those actual values, the B has to be factored out. I mean, technically we have a B here also, but it's a 1, so it don't really do anything. So I can't just look at this and think that I'm going to shift 2 pi somehow. I need to factor out that B. And a lot of what we've done, it's already been factored out, but it's not going to be factored out on all of these. So I'm going to have f of x equals cosine, that means you have to know how to factor also, which you're in a pre-AP print calculus class, I'm not reteaching you. 2 times x plus, what would this have to be? Pi and then plus 1. So once I have factored that out, then I can look at this right here, and that tells me I'm going to go to the left pi units. That's my horizontal translation. Okay. We okay with that? Do I need to factor anything out in number three? No. I mean, factoring one doesn't do anything. So this one means I go to the left how much? I have. Do I need to factor in number four? Yes. So that means I'm going to get f of x equals the sine of two times x plus what? Pi fourths. Thank you. So that means then that I'm shifting which direction? Left pi fourths. We good? Alrighty, number five. Do I need to factor? Yes. So factor it out, figure out what your shift is. be one-half times x minus what? Four pi. All right, so that means I'm going which direction? Right, four pi. Then f of x equals cosine of three x minus pi would be f of x equals the cosine of three times x minus what? Pi thirds minus two. So that means I'm going to be right pi thirds. Okay, we good? What questions you got? Let's look at number five. 
So just like the others, it says graph the function, then identify the characteristic. We really need to identify the characteristics so that we can graph them. Um, so I want to look at, since I have phase shifts and reflections that can be happening here, I want to make sure that I don't need to factor anything out here, which I don't, before I start figuring this stuff out. Amplitude here is 1. My frequency, or B, is 1, which means the, two, the period is 2 pi. Phase shift, which direction am I going? Left, pi halves units. My midline, y equals 0. So literally all that's happening to this one is it's moving to the left. So I'm going to do my little graph here. And my midline is at y equals 0. OK. Oh, that's a cosine. See, I already am doing ridiculous things. I didn't even look. I just drew cosine. I wasn't even paying attention to what it was. Uh, chances are pretty good. I'll probably catch myself, but just in case I don't, please just holler at me and tell me to go back and make sense of it. All right. Let me actually draw what I'm doing, which is sine. Yeah, and if I draw something that's different than yours, you better pause before you erase. This is more likely that you're probably right than me. All right. So with this point right here, is it my midline zero, zero? The only thing that would change that would be a phase shift left or right, which I have. So I'm going to put my pencil here, and then I'm going to move to the left pi halves, and that's where that point goes. Okay. Then my pattern is the same as it has been. I did the beginning of the period. Now I'm going to do the end of the period. The end of the period is a midline zero. The end of the period is at, it's a period of two pi, so I should be here without a shift. So I'm going to put my pencil there. And then I'm going to shift to the left pi halves. And that's the end. So now that I've got the beginning and the end, the rest is the same as it's been on all the rest. Half, half, half. Okay, so you have two options of how to get half. You could actually count these, or if depending on what the actual values are, like you know this is at 2 pi on the parent function, so this would be at pi, and that's going to be another midline zero. So I could put my pencil at pi and then shift to the left pi halves. And now I have them spaced out. Then halfway between these two from the midline, I go up whatever the amplitude is. So I'd go halfway between these two, go up, and then halfway between these two and go down. So what is a sine function ends up kind of looking like a cosine function, um, if you think about like where it starts, but it's the same either way. Okay, we're good on that. Then we just repeat these, so go ahead and repeat them. Any questions? All right. On number six, do I need to factor some stuff out? Yes, I do. So I'm going to have f of x equals cosine of two-thirds times x minus what? Pi. Good. All right. So my amplitude here is one. My frequency is two-thirds, so that makes my period what? Three pi. It would be two pi divided by two-thirds. I have a phase shift. I'm going to the right pi. My midline is y equals zero. This time this one is a cosine, so get that. My midline is still at y equals 0. All right. <clears throat> so if there was not a horizontal shift, then this point would, from the midline, 
on the y-axis, I would go up whatever the amplitude is. So that's where I'm going to start with my pencil. I'll go to the midline. The amplitude is 1, so I go up right here. But I have a phase shift. I'm supposed to move to the right pi. So I'm going to move to the right pi, and that's where that first point is. Yes? Okay. So then I'm going to do the end of the period. Well, the end of the period is at 3 pi. If I go over here to 3 pi and then move to the right pi, I'm like way off my graph, right? So it doesn't help me on my graph, but it's going to help me reason through where everything is supposed to be. So if I'm supposed to be at the end and it's 3 pi, halfway between would be at what? 3 pi halves. So if I put my pencil on... Did you miss the bus again? Oh. Um, so if I put my pencil at 3 pi halves right here and then move to the right pi, I'm going to be off my graph again, so I can't get that one on there either. But if I go halfway between these two, what would this measure be? 3 pi fourths. Okay. So I have a midline zero at 3 pi fourths, which is right here, but then I'm supposed to move to the right pi, right? And every space is pi four, so 1, 2, 3, 4, that would be moved to the right pi, so I have this point. So I'm only able to get these two on there, but that's enough because of the, re the repetitive pattern. You know that you're going, it, this goes, goes down and it stops, so it's going to come back this way. So that means I have two spaces, and then I would be back down here, and then two, and I'd be down here, and then two, I'd be back up here, two, back up here. Like so. And then I can just sketch it in. Any questions at all? Okay, so those are your horizontal shifts. Now let's do a couple with reflections. So there's nothing to factor out here because we're just going to look at a reflection first. This negative sign means that we're going to reflect in which axis? The x-axis. Okay, so it's going to be an x-axis reflection, which is really, um, if we shift our new x-axis, it's going to be your midline, whatever it is. All right, so amplitude here is 2, and it's a positive 2 because it's always the absolute value of 8. Frequency is 1, so our period is 2 pi. We don't have a phase shift. Midline y equals negative 3. All right, my sine function looks like this. My midline is at negative 3. This point is a midline 0, 0, unless I have a horizontal shift, which I do not. So I have a midline 0, 0. The end of the period is a midline zero wherever the period ends. This period is 2 pi, so I have another one right there. Then to get this third one, it's just halfway in between. So I have my three midline zeros there. On the parent function, I would go halfway between these two from the midline and go up whatever the amplitude is. But since I have this reflection, I'm going to go down instead since I'm reflecting. So halfway between these two from the midline, instead of going up to, I go down to. And halfway between these two, instead of going down to, I go up to. There are my five anchor points, and then I just repeat. What questions do you have? Anything? All right, good deal. So let's do another reflection one here. I don't need to factor anything out. Amplitude is 3. Frequency is 2. That means the period is what? Pi. 
I don't have a phase shift. Midline y equals 1. This one is cosine. Alrighty, so I would be on the y-axis up from the midline, the amplitude, except that I have this reflection and I'm reflecting in the x-axis or in my midline. So from the midline on the y-axis, instead of going up three, I'm going to go down one, two, three. The end of the period has the same y-value as the beginning of the period. So I just have to find the end of the period, which should be at pi, so that point has to be right there. Okay. Then it's half, half, half. Halfway between these two, I go on the other side of the midline. So halfway between these two from the midline, I'm going up three. Halfway between these two and these two, I have midline zeros. So I can get these points right here and right here. And then I just repeat. question on this? Alright, so let's put it all together then. I'm going to do a little bit of everything. <clears throat> I need to factor on this one, right? So this would be f of x equals negative 3 times the sine of 2 times x plus what? Pi halves minus 2. Amplitude is 3, frequency is 2, that makes the period pi. My phase shift is sending me which direction? Left, pi halves, and um, my midline is y equals negative 2. This is signs, this is that, midline is right. Okay, so when I start sine, this is a midline zero, zero, unless I have a horizontal shift, which I do. So I'm going to put my pencil at the midline zero, zero, and then shift to the left pi halves, and I'm right there. I have another midline zero at the end of the period. The period is pi, so at pi I'm going to put my pencil on the midline, but then I'm going to shift to the left pi halves. And now that I've got the beginning and the end, I can do half, half, half. Halfway between those two, I have another midline zero. Then i got to pay attention to my reflection and my amplitude. Halfway between these two, from the midline, I would go up three, except there's a reflection, so I'm actually going to go down three and end up right here. Which means halfway between these two, I go up one, two, three. Do you see how important that little parent function sketch is so you can follow along on which points you're doing? You can get lost in your points real easy, especially if you're not consistent with, you know, what order you do them in. Questions about those points? All right, then repeat them and get it graphed.
questions? All right, let's do 10 together as well. f of x equals 2 times the cosine of 1 half times x plus what? 2 pi plus 1. So my amplitude is 2. My frequency is 1 half. So then what is the period? 4 pi. I have a, sh a phase shift. I'm moving to the left, 2 pi. And midline is y equals 1. And this is cosine, so my graph looks like this. And my midline is at 1. All right, so this from, from the midline on the y-axis, I would be up whatever the amplitude is. There is not a reflection, so I am going up 2, but I also have to shift over 2 pi. So I'm going to put my pencil at from the midline. I'm going to go up 2, but then I have to shift over 2 pi to the left, which puts me right here. At the end of the period, I will have the same y value. That and that would start up way out here at 4 pi, which is way off the graph, but I shift to the left 2 pi, so where's that going to put me? At 2 pi. So at 2 pi, I have this y value. After that, I don't have to worry about the shift anymore because it is half, half, half. Halfway between these two, I would be on the other side of the midline. Well, that's at 0, so from the midline there, I'd go down 2. Then halfway between each set of those, I'm on the midline. So that would put me here at negative pi and pi. And those are my five anchor points, and those are the only ones that fit on there anyway. So then I just sketch that in. Questions about that? All righty. Then let's make sure we can get this one factored right, and then I'm going to let you graph this one. So f of x equals negative 3 times the cosine of 2 times x minus what? Pi fourths, good, plus 2. Okay. You find all your important stuff, get that graph sketched.
Y'all agree with that one? For a minute, my brain started to short circuit there. <laughs> I was doing well, and then, oof. Any questions? You good? All right, so remember your assignment is in Delta Math. Start on for today, and then we'll graph some more by hand tomorrow.